It's wonderful to be back here with so many friends, including my mentor and one of the co-founders co of Endeavor's Global Advisory Board, Bill Solomon, professor here. It's a privilege to be addressing the 10th annual Social Enterprise Conference at HBS. These 10 years were formative for the entire field of social entrepreneurship. As the mother of four-year-old identical twin girls, I now really get why formative years matter. <laughs> Over the past two decades, I've had the great fortune to be eyewitness to the growth and transformation of the social enterprise movement. Even a decade ago when this conference began, those of us in the field were a loose band of renegades and crazy people. <laughs> Former HBS professor Greg Dees dubbed us the social entrepreneurship mafia. Today, social entrepreneurship is a serious movement that has galvanized hundreds of thousands of people and transformed the lives of tens of millions of people around the world. Today, social entrepreneurship is taught on campuses, talked about at Davos, and mentioned in The Economist, The New York Times, and Wall Street Journal every other day. And when people like, well, our parents wonder what to make of this career path, we now can point to one of the leaders of our movement, Muhammad Yunus, who claimed a Nobel Peace Prize for his work with microcredit. We've come a long way, baby. I'd like to spend the first moments here talking about some of the people who helped define this movement. People like Alan Casey, who I remember in 1988 a, caused a stir on the law school campus with his idea for a National Youth Service Corps, City Year. People like Wendy Kopp, <coughs> whom I met in 1989 as she was writing her Teach for America business plan, brilliantly disguised as her Princeton senior thesis. Wendy managed to persuade me to come, become her first campus recruiter for TFA, and she nearly convinced me to drop out of Harvard altogether. I remember telling her, though tempted, I wasn't quite ready for the Bill Gates dropout model. People like Bill Drayton, who still dreams of a world where everyone is a change maker. Bill and his Ashoka Fellowship have provided inspiration and sustenance to countless innovators, and I was fortunate to begin my career at Ashoka in 1994. And yes, crazy people like me and my partner, Peter Kellner, who will speak later today, who had our own idea for an organization that would pioneer a new model for global economic development, rooted in support for high-impact business entrepreneurs. Endeavor was born just a few feet away in the Au Bon Pen in Shad Hall, where Peter and I scribbled out our vision on a napkin in 1997. At the time, crazy people like us didn't appear to have a legit legitimate profession. As I suggested earlier, our parents certainly didn't understand what the heck we did. In my own case, about the time when I was starting Endeavor, I overheard my mother lament to a friend. Alan and I sent Linda to Harvard and Yale only to have her take early retirement at age 28. So when did things change? When did we finally get this legitimate sounding name, social entrepreneurs? I actually remember discussions about naming this movement. For a while, public entrepreneurs was tested out. But then Newt Gingrich came along and called himself a public entrepreneur. There went that idea. <laughs> when the HBS Social Enterprise Initiative formed, it inspired a few people, including Bill Drayton of Ashoka, to settle on the name Social Entrepreneurs. At last, we had a name. But we still had a problem. What exactly were social entrepreneurs? And why should anyone else care about us? Well, in our minds, we were clearly differentiated from traditional NGOs and nonprofits. Social entrepreneurs are problem solvers, not idealists. We're driven by innovation, not by charity. And we don't believe in handouts. We use entrepreneurial strategies 
to achieve social change. Many folks just weren't buying, particularly not the established philanthropic foundations. In Endeavor's case, I still have the ding letters from foundations we approached in the late 1990s, which say that funding Endeavor was out of the question since we weren't helping the poorest of the poor, we were just supporting the middle class. Instead of losing hope, I became defiant. I hit the pavement to prove our detractors wrong, and I did so in the non-traditional way that all us social entrepreneurs start out. I became a stalker.